G'day punters, welcome to the mailbag. I'm Jack Dickens, he's Pete Anthonis, and on this week's show, Peter, we are going to preview big Turnbull Stakes Day meeting from Flemington headquarters. We're going to do the, the group races, so that's the Blazer, the Gilgai, uh, the Turnbull, the Bart Cummings, and the Edward Manifold. That's your job. I've only got Pretty the, impressive I've got that I, job. I remembered those names. So yeah. I only need to remember the Metrop and the Epsom. Yeah, because we're also going to touch on Royal Randwick punters. Oh. We're going to go across and we're going to preview the Epsom and the Metrop. And we're going to do that because this weekend, Rob Scurry's got some family stuff on and he can't get to the It'll Royal Randwick. Newcastle. Up in Newey, bro. Oh. It's a beautiful place, Newcastle. If you've never been, you should go. It's a really Rob Scurry place from what I've heard. But as the mailbags, you know, we're going to... Take the vest off, Pete. We're going to fly him up to Sydney, and he's got the Epsom covered. All of the races from Royal Randwick. Pretty excited to get back onto a big stage. Look, uh, a couple of months ago when I was planning this, I was going to Kalgoorlie for the Kalgoorlie Cup. Bit yeah. of a step up in grade. They're actually running the the Hannons today. Actually, well, once we finish this, we'll be able to get stuck into some Kalgoorlie punting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Wonderful. Hopefully, it goes a little bit better than what happened at Seymour today. Oh dear. Uh, Jesus. Anyway, punters, we are um, we're going to start with Flemington. Yep. We're going to head over to Royal Randwick. Then we're going to uh, answer one or two viewer questions, give our best, our values, our lays, and we'll announce the case bet cup. Pete and I both use puntingform.com.au, and in particular, we use the Punting Form Pro subscription. Uh, couldn't tip it high enough. Yep. I, it's what we use to review and to preview and everything we've done for this sort of preview show, all by Punting Form. If you're yep. not using it, you should be. You'll see our maps overlaid as well as we go along. Yeah, some, well, of the, some of the feature races. There could be some maps overlaid, which is which is a big step up for us. Yeah. Anyway, Flemington Pete rails out nine Ooh. meters. I expect there'll be no disadvantage to be forward. Yep. But I don't predict it'll be too biased. It was very very hard to make ground there on the Wednesday meeting when the rails out. I think fourteen meters. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit fairer than it was then. Um, tempo the key, but. You know, as always, Flemington at the 400 metre start, stuff like that, you want to be careful backing horses drawn wide gates with muddling speeds. Yeah? Yep, sounds good. Right, uh, we're going to kick off with a 400 metre race. It's race four, punters. The Blazer Stakes, group two for mares, over 400 metres. The market, Peter, well, mm. it looks a little bit like this. We have got, I've still got Kyneton up. Kyneton race, Carmen San Diego races at Kyneton tomorrow, punters, race four. Oh. Snap dancer form, please God. And also, there's a horse in race three, untried Ollie on launching. Hopefully, we uh, get something out of that meeting. Anyway, race four, Flemington. The market looks like this. We've got Fidelia favourite three dollars, Savatiano five fifty, Angelic Ruler six fifty, Pahuta Kawawa eight fifty, Spanish Whisper eight fifty, and Hot the Bruin ten dollars. Some tricky names there, Pete. Give me a break. <laughs> Uh, speed in this race, Peter. Yep. I thought that uh, Hort de Bruin probably leads. Spanish Whisper, Spanish Whisper from 9 probably rolls across as well. Uh, Savitiano from 10 and Fabric from 11. Fabric sat outside the lead, outside of Hort de Bruin last start and was too good at Caulfield. It's got speed too. Uh, Dawn Dawn from 1, loses Winks, gets uh, done. Should be probably pretty far, far forward, but probably finds a coffin. The rest sort of make up the rest of the field towards the back. I think Fidelio will still lob last with Aristia. Now, anything tickle your fancy here? Not from a betting point of view. Uh, I've got plenty of time for, for Fidelio. Uh, the way it just assaulted the line over the last 200 metres. Thought the, the extra little bit of journey, um, or the, the same distance, I should say, at Flemington, just looks ideal. Um, but that's probably the main one. The one that I was looking forward to seeing stepping up in journey is Angelic Rule of the WA form. Uh, the West is best form. Keep that just rolling on. Damien Oliver jumps on board. Arguably should have won at double figures there last start at Caulfield. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Look, I, I thought Angelic Ruler brings the strongest form to the yeah. race. Um, it was a big run last start. Now gets Ollie from Barrier 6. I think he'll lob midfield or just worse. And be very, very strong late. I think it's a horse to beat in the race. I'm yep. surprised it's such a big price. Spanish Whispers, another horse I think's big odds here. It's going super. Form lines are our mystic journey if you go far enough back. Um, it won really well. It was suited by the bias, mm. well, the, the tempo and the, and the race shape last start. But it very well could be here again. Um, it ticks a lot of boxes. I think Fidelia's flying. Yep. Clearly it is. Uh, but it needs luck. It's always going to need luck. And it probably will again here. 
it's a, it's a risk at that price for me betting now without seeing like the more scratchings the more likely it yeah. wins but with this sort of size field I, I still although Fidelia is a beast and going great if it's if it's got the same amount of momentum and it's right next to say Angelic Rule at the 300 it's no moral no no but, I mean those are the two I was looking to play around with but uh, I'll be waiting for your Yard mail, I think. Well, I suspect in the numbers will be a horse dawn dawn. It's a typical yep. hawk's beast. This thing's got plenty of condition. Uh, it, it won't be anywhere like over the top from its last start where it was very very good. It probably could have won. Uh, I think the the rider upgrades a tick. Um, it's a it's a tricky race. If you can't get confident about something, mm. I think it's an each way value, which we are both sort of saying angelic ruler. I think it's a pretty tricky race. Like both the Cummings horses, the Sheik's horses, the um, uh, the Sheik's horses, uh, both good chances and both have pretty f- friendly maps here. Yep. Uh, it's a really deep race, good race. Can't wait to get there and see what they do. But I'll, I'm tipping Angelic Ruler here each way, all day. Even. Race six, Pete, to Gilgore Stakes. Oh. Group two, 1,200 metres, right down the straight there at Flemington. Rail out nine. Yep. Sunlight favourite, backs up from the Moya, $2.70. Santa Anna Lane, just outside her, two seventy five, two eighty. dollars 80 Zatori, $6.50. Ty Zone, Craig Williams, Queensland form, $14. I'm excited. Jay Allen, $17. Won the race last year. Longer the rest. Speed here, Pete. Am I doing them again? Yeah. I'm doing them all. You've got the maps. I've got to do a lot of you. I don't I'm struggling. Any. Look, Home of the Brave, Sunlight, I Am Someone, Dothraki, and Vataya Silver. I think they're the sort of... Vital Silver. Vital Silver. I can't, I can't fucking see it. Sorry. It's a WA horse. Try not to swear anymore. <laughs> uh, is it? Yeah. Oh, God. It probably wins. It <laughs> pays the hundreds. Uh, Natalie, Vainstream, Bella, Martini, I think from 11, will be just behind the good speed with Zatori. Tie zone, I'm excited, and at the back, Santa Anna Lane. I'm excited won the race last year. Yep. It did It did more than enough in a really strong form reference in Sydney to say that it's it's right in this race. I, I, don't, I can't knock the horse at all. Sunlight, I think, will start shorter than it is now and dominant favourite. I agree. It was not suited in Moya. It was a weird ride. Uh, it found again. It was really strong through the line. Uh, Scurry said the horse was a little bit soft. First up, mm. round week. I thought it was soft at Mooney Valley. The quick backup will really suit this horse and bring it on. Um, she's a beast. She's bomb-proof. She makes her own luck. Oh, I can't knock her. I think off the punting form data. .com.au. Last, .com.au. The last 200 metre sectional gives every impression of 1,200 metres. Looks ideal for this start. Yeah, I love the setup. Yeah. But it, I, I would say, though, the race is a bit of a tricky race. Like, Keena Ray won this race two years ago. Keena Ray's running around in Queensland, I think. Even if that. Like, it's 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 a race that they can throw up a bit of a result. Zootori, Pete. Mm. Zootori. Now, it ran an enormous figure. Yep. Down the straight, last start, first up with Meech. Now yep. gets D-Lane on. Parsifel was really good in that same race. We backed it last start um, at Caulfield. Yep, no luck. Slaughtered. J-Car slaughtered it. Um, the, ride, the, the run looked average, but mm. it ran a big figure. Yeah. So the, the numbers out of that Satori race stood up. I, I think Satori is probably the horse on the up here that might just blow him away. System bet for me. Yep, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, guess D Lane ticks a lot of boxes to Tory. Santa Anna Lane, what do we do with it? I think it's better second up based on what it's done the last three preps in terms of the figures it's recorded. Better but second up. Outside of Sunlight, though, like Sunlight's a legitimate Group 1 yep. horse. So Santa Anna Lane is an elite. It's probably the best, as good yep. a sprinter we have in this country. But is it going to be cherry ripe for this race as opposed to what might be coming up in a few weeks? Well, time? I suppose you'll just have to wait and see. You have to buy them any on mail. Oh. How can you bet without it? Well, you, technically you can. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with I'm Someone, Pete? Uh, it's the right it... yard to just, just blow them away here, just explode and run a big, big figure. Yeah, I wasn't interested. I'm very scared of it. Watch yep. it parade. Vein streams unlikely, but you never know. And Dothraki maybe missed a little bit here, I thought. No. Well, it was as good as Parsifal was. I'm putting lines through things. What about uh, Tie Zone? You're pretty good on your little imported form. What are you doing with it? Oh, Tie Zone coming down from Queensland. Not for me. 
Okay. We're, we're no, paying I'll, I'll, I'll upon us. pretty keen sunlight and my system bet in Zatori. All right. Race we go. number seven. It's the big one. It's the Turnbull Stakes, uh, 2,000 metres. Group one, Mystic Journey still holds favoritism at two dollars and eighty cents. Mister Quickie three dollars and eighty cents. Finch D Lane eight fifty. Oh. Hartnell tens nines thereabouts. Kings will dream nine fifty tens thereabouts. Rostropovich thirteens longer the rest. The speed map here now. Don't don't abuse this if you don't agree here. It's a tricky speed map. Bagsy leads. Trap for fools. Bagsy. Yeah, that's what they call them in WA. Bagsies? Yeah. That's an interesting name. Yeah, from 12, I'd anticipate that Trap for Fools crosses and leads and sets a, sets a very genuine tempo, tempo here, Peter. Go, Hawley. Uh, Kentucky Breeze from 6 will roll forward. Finch has got some speed. I think it sits sort of the coffin. I doubt Kingswood Dream will be as ridden as positive as it was in the Maccabi Diva. Probably rolls back three or four of the fence. I reckon Hartnell from 5. I, I actually really like the jockey change. Bowman off. Brad Ruilla on. Hartnell is parading outstanding. Mm. I think I don't like the way it's been ridden the last two or three times. I think from five, Brad intent, it can land the one one. If it does, and Vow and Declare or looks like Elvis kick up and Kingswood Dreams there, I don't know how Mystic Journey gets in. Now it's stepping up from sixteen hundred to two thousand, which is a risk in my opinion. Yep. I think they'll be a little bit nervous on it. I doubt they're going to roll forward and force it here. She could well be snicked to near the back. Um, there's no guarantee she even gets in anywhere here. Uh, very very elegant out, but we've still got like Rostropovich, Mr. Quickie. That they'll, they'll all sneak and get in. Mm. If he looks for a bit, he'll be either cast or have to go right back here. Uh, I thought Hartnell was big, big odds here. Big odds. Good each way bet Hartnell. And I thought Trap for Fools... The quick back up, out 2,000 metres. I've seen this horse run at Flemington over this trip and not stop before. It's the right yard, the right setup for this thing just to keep going. It's $41 was around early. We missed it. No, big odds. I would have taken 41s if it yeah, was there. I think sure. 23 is about, about its mark. Might get something late on the fair. Possibly. I'd say wait. Yeah. It, um, Kentucky Breeze, hard to have, been up a long time. Finch will get a soft run, but I'll just... Vaughn declares prep seems odd to me. I don't want to know about it. Mr. Quickie's a horse we haven't spoken about yet. Yeah. The the stayer on the up, the yep. young superstar. Big flashing light run. What do you do with it? Uh, I was pretty keen to have it on top um, out of this field. Mr. Quickie, I thought just the way it assaulted the line of the last 200 metres. Can't help but think it would just be suited going up to 2,000 metres. It's run good figures over that distance in the past. Do you reckon it'll start favourite? I don't know if we'll start favourite. I think there's a lot of good sentimental money around for Mystic Journey. People just love backing that horse. I reckon yeah. they'll keep it short because because of what you just said. Yeah. Because the they target and do dirty things to, yeah. to to the sentimental types who bet, but come late when the big dogs get involved. I reckon Mr. Quickie will start favourite. The two I wanted to play were Mr. Quickie and Trap for Fools. As you said, the last two figures over the 2,000 metres at Flemington, the horses run third and first and run good figures on both occasions. Yeah. I... It gets a cheap time of things out in front. It can be very difficult to get past. And paraded really well, I thought, at Caulfield. Oh, it's a beast. Yeah. Absolute yeah. beast. I thought uh, Hartnell's the way to go here each way and get something Trap for Fools. I'd then be Mr. Quickie and I'd then be maybe Mystic Journey. But I, I just think at the price, there's a huge risk. Yeah. Kings will dream look plain, but if ridden it a little bit different, could improve here. Finch going good, Sydney form. The rest hard to have. Race eight, Peter, yes. is the Bart Cummings. It's over 2,500 metres, and the market looks like this, my man. The Bart. Surprise, baby, $2.50. Oh. King of Leo Grants, five fifty. Wolf, El Meech. Gay Waterhouse, $8. Ventura Storm, 14s. Etymology, 14s. Supernova goes of dollar to Dunn. Hawks Yard, 14 bucks. Longer the rest. Speed map here. Suppose you want one of them too. Yep. Giving away a lot of speed maps today. Wolf will lead. Dal Haralid. Haralid. Play on. Sweet. Yep. Sweet. Uh, I think it'll sit sort of OSL. Get a lovely run there, Dal Haralid. Harapor and Ventura Storm, Azuro, Supernova, sort of there or thereabouts. 
Our Faris and Etymology, I don't like the maps. I think they need to roll forward, but they might not, given the this this map. Surprise Baby will we'll get a lovely, lovely run from Geordie Childs from Barry Six. It'll sit sort of worse in midfield, but not last. Uh, King of Leningrads, I reckon Ollie will get Surprise Babies back. Uh, it's a fascinating horse here. Fascinating horse. Have you got any reads this race? Oh, I'm going to have something small on our Faris despite the draw each way. It was blessed last start. It Completely was. Completely blessed. Yeah. I'm getting a And then here. also the stable mate tried to buy it. Yeah. Ventura Storm punters, who's going to get around the race here, loomed, lobbed. It was a moral at the 300. It would have traded a dollar at five. And then it tried to buy it like a naval <laughs> warfare. And still almost won whilst trying to buy it. You gotta have incentives. Who was? <laughs> can't do that sort of stuff. Oh, it's a bit of Bunbury style. Um, yeah, no, Al Faris, big figure last start, ran the distance, like that setup. Just looks a progressive horse, so to speak. One of those horses that has, is capable of running a good figure. Just needs that slight bit of luck. I'm happy to take something on the price because outside of that, he looks a tricky enough race for me. Um, so for me, I was yeah more than happy to have something just a little interest bit on Al Faris. Over the past four years in this race, right? Yep. Horses in the finish run top the top three, which you can see on puntingform.com.au's feature race reports, yep. which are an outstanding bit of information. They've every so last four years, three horses, twelve of them, all have had a, a run at two thousand meters or further as a lead up to this race. Al Faris ran last start of the twenty five hundred. And the race has produced a really good overall figure. The weakest was eleven point five lengths above punting form benchmark, and that was by Al Mandon, who then won a Melbourne Cup, yep. right? Surprise Baby was blessed last start and very, very good. Very, very good, but blessed. It now goes 1,600 metres to 2,500. Now, it did it first first up in its first ever prep, going to Adelaide Cup, the Morphville yep. Cup, whatever it's called. But 16 to 25, I don't care, it's still scary. As is Prushka, the trainer, he's a scary unit, but that's yep. it's, it's risky, isn't it? At two $2.50? Cents. Yeah, I don't have a lot of respect for the horse, but... That's a it's a good step up, isn't it? It's it's fascinating. I'm yeah. fascinated to see what this does in the market. Yeah. Like, does it start? The dollar, it's trending to start like a dollar ninety here. Yeah. Fuck, I don't, I don't think, think it does. I think we have to lay it. Yeah. A dollar ninety's got to be laid. Yeah. Yeah. Del Harrelid has good ability and lots of upside. Right. Lightly raced. It the ride first up, he pinged the lids and was sneaked heavy. It lacked intent badly. The horse was running around really nice horses first up, first prep. Now it's a second prep Australia. Oh, it goes 17 and 25 is the only chink I could find. But mm. versus it's SP, the price we're going to be taking, 20s. It's a bet for me each way here. Big time, Del Harrelid. Uh, King of Leningrads, I think it's had excuses, both Aussie starts. Um, the race shape just didn't suit it at all, Mooney Valley. Ollie got it wrong, which is rare, but he got it wrong at uh, Flemington. I think he would have killed Al Faris and um, the other horses that come from that form, Ventura Storm, and that's so the markets. I agree with the market in that form line, whereas you're going with Al Faris. Yep. And the interesting runner, I thought he was Supernova. Supernova, too far back there last start off the slow tempo. Heavy, 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 heavy amounts of cash came for it late. Yeah, it was a well-backed commodity. So this is a horse with good ability. You'd think so. Sydney form. Yeah. I don't think you can go around a loser. Thoughts? We did back at last start. Yeah, you've got to follow your money, I reckon. Yeah, I think so. I'll be backing Del Harrelid, each way heavy, getting something out of Supernova. Well, you'll be able to give us a push out of Supernova because Rob didn't like it there at random last start. Yep, true. Okay, race nine, oh, Pete, the race. Goat Lager Edward Manifold Stakes, a group two for fillies. It's over the mile. The market looks like this, mate. You should have been doing the market, so I could have been preparing the maps. We'll do that next week. Yep. We're improving a lot, guys, but we're not there yet. Uh, Miami Bound, 290 and favourite, subpoenaed. <sighs> been a bit of a curse for us, that horse. $4.40. A fair to remember. Should have won last start, but it didn't. Well. $7.00. Bia Vecini, Bon Vecini, good luck with that. $12, excuse Willow, $12, really discreet, 17s, deserve 23s. Just be careful, punters, if you're rolling through this market, Sportsbet have up 129% market, but go in there and check out terms and conditions because it's not sweet. Mm. 
you, you, you're going to cop deductions. Um, so we're just ignoring them here. Uh, that's the market. The map looks a little bit like this, in my opinion, Peter. We've got... Oh, it's busy. It's real busy. What's going on? Celica, if runs, will cross and sit, probably lead. Westport from three, I think, will be ridden with a little bit more intent. Yep. Box seat, maybe coffin. Uh, excused, Ficino, and Excel, Excelidia. How's this for, like, a curse? I got those goggles, those glasses, because I needed them. But now, I've, what I've learned is if you wear glasses, you lose even more strength in your eye. Now the glasses are broken. I can't see. It's eight months ago, I could see. Anyway, uh, 11 last deserved. They'll be forward-ish. Uh, presently from four. I don't know where it'll lob. And the favourite mummy bound from two. I can't see it further forward than midfield here. It's going to be back and buried, which is not good. Uh, B of a Cini, well, number two. A fair to remember, really discreet, Oriental Lily and Moonlight Maid and even Song Brigade. They're going to have to sneak from those wide draws. I'd assume one or two try and roll a dice, but it's a risky proposition for either, all of them. I thought the race was just chaotic and scary. It's wonderful. And you can get rid of some if you do it via the map and you can do boom, 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 boom but I, I don't know what to do. If you made me have a bet now, it would be excused each way, who I think has been really, really... Solid in what it's done so far, and maps to get a really nice willow style ride here. Just in behind the speed, perfect situation for Craig. I'm having a splash bet here. Something excused, something deserved, which is a system bet. Something really discreet. It sounds like a bit of a. Oh, they're all at you know twenty to one or so. It sounds like a song or something. And then something on a fair to remember, which actually really does sound like a song. <laughs> really discreet, a fair to remember, deserved and excused. And then you'd be Miami bound. Sounds like a Hame song. She was talented, and then you get subpoenaed by your missus. What the hell? Fuck. That's scary. Absolute cast to end the day. Anyway, so yeah, you're having a few bets there. Yep. I'm, I'm suggesting don't bet there. If you do, you've got problems, and you're probably sick. We'll have it at Renwick? Yeah, of course. Royal Renwick. Well, that Rails out the... three metres. Yeah. We're gonna, well. just going to do two races here, punters. Two only. Race seven. The punningform.com.au. Epsom Handicap. The group one over the mile. Indeed. Do you want me to do the market, Pete? Yeah, you do the market. I'll get the map. Just let me just let me um, just let me get that up for you. It's a pretty nice race map. seven. The Epsom punningform.com.au. Colding favourite five dollars. Tiako Shark six fifty. Dreamforce seven dollars. Rock, who's back on SmackDown this week? Apparently seven dollars. Cascadian nine fifty. Gem Song. Oh, that was painful last week. 11s, start of the seas, 18s, best of days, 19s, unforgotten, 23s, Natoya, 34s, Desert Lord, 26s, Fitty Stars, 26, Junipel, 26s, 31s, wherever you want. Um, speed map, you got one? Yeah, I do. I, I think there's a lot of horses here that are going backwards. It's a huge field. It's wonderful. Dreamforce will obviously come across from 20. Has to. No other option. What else is it going to do? Just loiter there. Desert Lord from nine. Arcademus from four. Best of days. Gem Song, 50 stars. I think they'll all push forward to a forward to midfield position. Star of the Seas from 14. Even the Candyman out in 18 as well. They'll probably come across. But then most of the rest of the field will probably just float back through. I think there's a couple of nice bets here at a, at a price. I'm prepared to take on Colding. I'm expecting that horse will be back in the... The rear end Back of the Back in field. the ruck. Yeah, exactly. Bruh. I mean, it does obviously, uh, I guess, figure like a few of the previous stable mates in these little handicap races. Um, but for me, I, I can't have, I can't let 50 stars go around given the, the way it, the maps in this field and some of the data it's produced over these trips, especially the distance. I think it's a, a really nice horse. Um, so 50 stars, best of days is the other one, similar price, not letting it go around a, a loser. And I've just got a feeling that El Dorado Dreaming was really good first up, and although it does produce usually its best figures third up, I won't It's scratched, bro. No, it's just scratched. Yeah. They're up. Well, that's easy. It makes my job Scrap a lot easier. Scratch, bro. bro. So um, 50 stars and best, best of days, I thought, were the two that mapped particularly well for this event. And just at big prices, I was quite happy to have something on. Yeah, look... I thought 50 stars was suited in the Maccabi Diva. But that's, that's a proper race. Yeah. 
it was heavily, heavily backed into favoritism almost uh, in the homesman uh, fee and stakes at Mooney Valley. Like, that's red hot for. The other thing for me is this, for me, will be a genuinely run race. Mm. And so I'm looking for horses with proper horses with proper figures. I thought two, two at odds here that interest me greatly. Junipel, and even more rougher, Mr. Marathon Man. Yep. Yet to be suited at any run this prep. Doesn't stop. Chases lines heavy, Sheen style. I think it's huge odds. Down the minimum. Big odds. Mr. Marathon Man each way for me in the uh, Epsom. Now, I just thought I'd mention that if you head to betfair.com.au or punningform.com.au, you'll get, uh, I think it's... Is there seven group races at Randwick? I think there's seven group races at Randwick, if I'm wrong, don't worry. And five group races at uh, Flemington. You get a feature race report via punting form. I think if you're a pro form subscriber, you get them. And if you're a certain level of punter at Betfair, you get them. It's outstanding information. They've previewed the whole race for you, but you also get the last four years of the race. So you can start to build a little profile, a little pattern for yards, trainers. Walla, how does he attack this race? Mm. Stuff like that's all there. Great, great tool if you if you're interested. Race eight, Pete, the Metrop Group One handicap over twenty four hundred meters. The market looks well. It looks like this. We've got as favourite. We've got Brigham Rocks, who was dominant in a big figure returning race in at Caulfield, four dollars and forty cents. Stampede, the Hippo, six fifty. Scarlet Dream, Robbie Dolan, six fifty. Hush Rider, Tim Clark, nine bucks. Come play with me, the gun, eight fifty. Longer the rest. Uh, speed map here, Peter. Yep, here it comes. I think Stampede will lead from the stable mate Hush Rider, so they'll probably find their positions and just hack them along. Um, so Charles Road, Wu Gok from fourteen, Grey Lion. I think they'll come across and try and put themselves into the race. Behind them, come play with me, Shraro. 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 Uh, Scarlet Dream attention run and then there's just a bunch of horses that will just float back through the field I think just given their draws I thought Brigham Rocks deserves to be favourite the figure it ran was huge it gets a positive jockey chain jockey chain Walker off McAvoy on tick 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 uh, Big Duke got through the line beautifully yeah. for this it's big yep. odds here right yard to sort of just grand final at Randwick I always love Chris Lee's at Royal Randwick as opposed to Rose Hill yep um, and Nuff's box. Nuff's. <laughs> Fuck. Can you say? You worked at Sky, mate. Oh, we, we sent you off to get high end training. You should be able to pronounce this. Nuff. Bosk? Bosk. Nuff Bosk. New Bosk? Nuff Bosk. It's been showing enough to, to be right in this race. It's a sneaky setup. It's going to get a suck run. If it gets the gaps, it'll be strong late. Yep. But I thought Big Duke each way is probably the way to play the race. Oh, I was happy to play Big Duke and Shraro at the prices. Anything else you want to add for Royal Ramick, which you are headed to? You're excited about two-year-old racing? First two races on the card, two-year-old races. What, oh. a, what a gift. I oh, know, how excellent is that? Don't even the, have to do anything There's more. no better time to, to, to bet from the yard than yep. in unraced but quality horses like the, like you'll be getting there. Yeah, magnificent. It's the best because there's no like outside factors. It's just your eye versus the horse. Yep. Beautiful times. Okay, Peter. Best bet, value bet, and you bet fair. Lay of the day. Oh, the best. I actually really like Probabil to beat Funstar at Randwick. I know we're not getting too much for a price, but I think uh, playing around with that. Um, so which race is that? That is the the race. Race four at Randwick. Randwick, race four, number two, Probabil, $2.20 to beat the dollar eighty favourite yep. in Funstar. Yep. K More. McAvoy versus J Mac. It was very heavily with Thunstar last start. I think that will switch around over the 1,600 metres. Value bet, bruh? I think everything I've said so far today has been a value bet. Fair, fair call. They're all over $10. And are you, so let me guess what your betfair.com.au lay of the day is. Thunstar. Makes sense. Yep. All right, punters. My best bet of the day, race Flemington. Race four, number six, angelic ruler, each way, all day. Heavy, heavy bet. It's... A, well placed doors and big odds it should be half the price in my opinion my value comes in the bar Cummings race 8 number 2 Dell Harolid uh, you get 20 23 one joint probably get better on the day 
Just a little nibble each way, one by three. Lovely. And I'm going to lay race seven. Number four, Mystic Journey. I think she's a real risk getting to 2,000, particularly with the way this map shapes at the moment. If the race was depleted in scratchings, I'd reconsider my position. Peter, Case Bet Cup, Flemington, yep. race nine. The Mountain Goat, Edward Manifold Stakes. Wonderful. Which horse are you taking? You're not allowed to take a horse in single figures. Okay. And you're also not allowed to take the horse, which I told you I want to take earlier. And I can't take the four that I suggested I was going to back either. I can't take all if four. If they're double figured, you can take one of them. No, I'll, um, I'll go really discreet. Really discreet? Cast on the map. Yep. We'll be, we'll be back and last. It's okay. But it won't run last because it'll be last in the corner. We'll yep. make some ground. You run yep. midfield. Yep. Smart. <laughs> Tactical. I'm going to take excuse. Willow, one and one. Yep. It'll look like the winner at some stage, I reckon. Uh, excuse for me. Now, we've mentioned you're on track. We've got Mania Mail this weekend from Royal Randwick on Epsom Day. We've also got the Valley covered Friday night by myself and Flemington. Boys, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. We're going to kick over now to a couple of viewer questions, or one in particular, and that's going to be us. If you've had enough, just tune out. Thanks for watching. Viewer question, Pete. Yes. I'll pick this one out. Um, from Tom. How does a strapper positively or negatively affect a horse? For example, when you comment that a strapper is no good, should that be influenced my bet confidence? Reference race five, Caulfield. Did we? Did I bag the, the strapper on Dallas Arm? No, I think that was me. Well, who? Yeah. Who was that then? Um, for me, it depends on exactly how big and negative the strapper is on that occasion. Um, but there's certain things that strappers can do to obviously reduce the horse's chance of winning. Um, there's conversely there's things that they can do to actually improve a chance of the horse running particularly well. Um, but for me, the, the negatives of a strapper far outweigh the potential positives. I think I'd I think I'd say more negative strappers than positive strappers. I'll put it that way. I th I, I think that yeah, he's talking about Dalsa. It was a neg it was a negative strapper. Yep. Um, I reckon a strapper is a hugely undervalued asset in the racing stable. Mm -hmm. They'd be the lowest paid person in the stable, and they'll just grab anyone they can half the time. There there are strappers who strap all the time for the big yards and yeah, the good and yards, and you difference. can just you just know who they are. And I, when he's down, like I say, yeah. like she's a grouse strapper. Yeah. He's horrible. It's just good. It's just like if you if you're going to like. If Mike Tyson's going to like box, you don't want like the guy who's taking him into the ring like flicking him on the ear the whole time <laughs> before he fights. It's just going to piss him off and, and fire him up. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Different strappers suit different horses. They're not all bad. Like a bad strapper might be a good strapper for a certain horse. Well, yeah, that's it. It often depends on the horse, doesn't it? I hate seeing a horse that's like chilled and, and mellowed with a strapper that's not chilled and mellowed, mm. et cetera, et cetera. I understand, like, gadding, like, that that needs a firm strapper. Yep. That strapper I'd normally not like would suit gadding. Yep. That's just about it. We've also had a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of social media about Druzy. They want Druzy back. Punners, Druzy comes on this show whenever he likes. He's very, very busy at the moment, compiling one of the most detailed productions, pieces correspondence you've ever seen to articulate his views on the internationals that are invading our country to take our prize money. And he's done pretty well the last couple of they're years. They're not coming on boats, they're coming on planes, <laughs> they're not taking our jobs, they're just taking our prize money. That's your punting turnover, they're taking it back to their country. They don't need it, they've got heaps, they just flew her on a plane. But that's what that's what Drew's previewing. Which ones are good and which ones are bad. He's actually waiting a little bit just for... Um, a couple more noms or just to make sure which ones come on the plane. The first first load landed on Grand Final Day, I think. Um, he might be waiting on one more load of horses or something like that and he's going to clarify his positions and get confident in what he wants to say. We might be doing a just a one-off show on the imports. Um, but Drew's also doing the midweek preview each and every week. He runs it himself with Nick Noonan. So if you want to get involved there, just head to the website and you can find all that information out. The old podcast going well. They're actually... Unbelievably good at it. Stay tuned for a special WA podcast 
with myself and Luke Dayton regarding Kalgoorlie for Saturday. Well, get involved. Get involved. Ooh. Dates is an asset. We love dates. He'll be here soon, a couple of weeks. The Bunbury, training. The Bunbury banded over for a couple of weeks. Oh. He's a bit of a weapon. We he can is. talk about what happened over there, but we'll have to talk about yep. it. Yep. Okay, that's us. Hope you enjoyed the show. Guys, thanks for watching, and good luck on the weekend. Bye-bye.